No beauty. Mm. Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Are you the man I come to for service? Oh, exactly. I am definitely the man you come to for service. As a matter of fact, I am the source of good service. Oh. And if we were still in that hotel that we should never have checked out of this morning, yeah. I'd be rendering great service to my queen right now. Yeah, well, that's yeah. exactly where I should have stayed. What's wrong? Maybe then I wouldn't have had that run-in with Holly just now. Well, did you two have a fight? No, just, just tensions about procedure and, ro and Ross. Oh, well, look, I've got the perfect solution for tensions, you know. What do you say we play hooky from work again tonight and go back to the Regency and we can start the service back where we left off? Mm, that sounds like exactly what I need. Does it? Yes, it does. Mm. No, you don't. Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the last day. If I'm gonna get pregnant, it's got to be tonight. I can't believe that you caught me before I left. This is so incredible. That was Cat on the phone. She's at the tower. She's waiting for me. She's back in town. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Are you sick? Hmm? Oh, no. No, honey, I'm I'm fine. Are you sure? Because you seem a little jumpy. No, it's just that I, uh, I need to see Billy, that's all, and he's up at Cross Creek. Well, he'll come back soon, won't he? But I need him here now. I need him here tonight. Or else my marriage is doomed. Over oh, home. I thought you were taking me back tomorrow. No, no, I'll do that in the morning. Besides, there's something that I gotta take care of tonight. tell you the truth and then you can do whatever you want how many times have you told me the truth miss spaulding why should i believe you now because i have nothing left but the truth all the lies have been used up it's too late it's not too late nick it can't be you should have thought of that before you and thorpe chased melinda out of town don't you get it yet lady i don't ever want to see you again Be here a long time then. I'll just go up to the lighthouse. Don't. Please allow me to explain. If I want to know anything else, I'll ask your buddy, Roger Thorpe. 
There's no need for you to talk to Roger. I will tell you the truth. I did hire Roger to break up you and Mindy. He was successful, and I paid him off. Well, I guess you can go now. I'm not finished. Well, there's nothing really left to say. Well, there's a great deal more to say. And the most important, though I know you find this hard to believe right now, the most important is that what I did to Mindy was not done to be cruel. It was an act of love. <laughs> love? Do you know how sick I am of hearing you say that word? But it's true. It's a lie! You don't even know what the word means. Well, maybe you'll understand this. I don't want to be your son. All right? Now you get it. What? What are you saying? I said you're so wrong. I do know what love is. If I didn't love you, you wouldn't be able to break my heart. Well, maybe Billy's back in Springfield already. I mean, he doesn't live here, so he may have left Cross Creek and you wouldn't even know it. No, I asked a friend of mine who works at the airport to call me the minute he gets back. But I haven't heard a word, so it's over. No, Nadine, it's not over. No, honey, it was tonight or never. Oh, come on, Nadine, you've got so much to offer. You're a television star. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Billy never watches my show. Well, I know things are going to work out for you. I mean, you really deserve it. I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to pay you back for lending me the money to find the de to hire the detective to find the father of the baby. Oh, honey, that was a gift. Well, and besides that, I mean, you let me hang out here, which is great, so that I don't have to suck my gut in around my aunt and uncle all the time. You know, Nadine, if there's ever anything I can do for you. Thanks for the thought. But I really don't think so. Well, um, I really hate to leave you like this, but I, I gotta get going to the towers. Kat's gonna be waiting for me. You know, it's good that she's back because it'll take some of the burden off of you. I'll have someone to talk to about all this mess. Yeah, that's nice. I really want to tell her. But I, I don't know how. I mean, she's really cool, and I know she'll understand and everything. She'll probably have good advice for me, but... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get going. I'll see you, okay? Hi. Hello? He has? He is. <laughs> all right, how about some champagne to cool down with? Mine's all chilled, we'll let yours settle. How did you know I was on my way back? I have my sources. Oh, I hate it. I wanted to surprise you. It's no fair. You're always, you're always topping me. You ain't seen nothing yet. What? You'll see. What, is there a present for me around here Maybe. somewhere? Maybe. Where is it? No, 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 no. All good things come to those who wait. You're not going to be mean to me, are you? That's the farthest thing from my mind. <laughs> So how was your trip? What happened? I mean, or are you too tired? No, no, I'm not at all. Okay. It was, um... It was wonderful. It was really great. We, um... Well, we just had a good time together. You know, we talked and... Oh, we have a new hobby. What? You know the way Bill feels about dinosaurs. Been to? Well, we have a whole collection of fossils because when we went walking up in the hills, we found some actual ones. Oh, no. What? I smell a museum materializing. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid he brought a lot back and he's going to put them all up on his already crowded desk. Well, not quite all. He's, oh. he's going to give some to you. Oh. Gee, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I told him you can't bring all those back, and he said, I'm not going to. Some of them are for Ben. Huh. That's really wonderful. Mm. So what else happened? Well, we, we talked a lot, and we laughed a lot. See, we, we'd agreed that there would be no television and no radio. Good. So we had to make our own fun, and uh, we went out. Well, there was this little place out on the highway called the Snake Hall of Fame. 
So you stopped. Yeah, we did. And and I was expecting there'd be stuffed snakes or something, but you know, there were live ones. And the big draw was that you could actually hold them. Can you imagine? How did you do? I did great. I held a, I held a garter snake. And Bill Bill had this big uh, boa constrictor that he would, somebody draped over his neck. And he actually held it aloft like, like Tarzan. And I was really uh, glad that it had eaten. The snake? Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. Well, that's good. Because that must have helped you later on when you broke the news to Bill about you and me. Uh, well... Well, you see, what happened was that when I went to tell him... You didn't tell him. You had Billy come all the way out to Cross Creek to help you. And you never broke the news to Bill about you and me, did you? Well, I, I wanted to tell him, I really did, and I was planning on telling him, but... Uh, well, he has a very sensitive nature, Bill does, and... You know, it was the first time in years that the two of us had been alone together, and, and he was happy, and we were having a good time, and he didn't have that awful, when are you going to leave look on his face. And I was waiting for the right time. Right. And Billy's I... Billy's arrival. Well, I really felt that if I did find the right time, it would make it much easier for everybody else. And then I had it all set up. I was planning to tell him, and the phone rang. And it was Maureen, and it was an emergency. So you left? I had to leave, Fletcher. I really did. And I, I felt that if I... Well, I suppose I could have blurted it out then, but but then I wouldn't have been able to deal with any of the problems that came up. And so I just... Well, it was just... bad timing and... and bad luck. You see that, don't you? No. I don't see that it had anything to do with bad luck. And it's not about bad timing, and it's not about your son's sensitive nature. Hell, it's not even about you and me. I don't know what you're talking about. It's about Billy. Yeah, look, Nadine, uh, whatever it is that you come about, um, maybe you better wait till tomorrow. I'm real tired and I'm just about to go to sleep. That's perfect. Because I came to join you. In bed. Oh! Baby, we thought you were going to be back next week. Yeah, we had it circled on the calendar and everything. Well, I got a really cheap flight, so I decided to come home now. And plus, I missed you guys. Oh, Get her a ginger ale. No, I'd like to have red wine, please. Uh, ginger ale. Daddy, I had red wine in Paris. Ginger ale. So, did you Whoa. just get here? <laughs> no. I got here last night. Last oh. night? Look, if we had known... No, no, no. I'm huh? happy that I didn't interrupt you guys. I'm sure you had a great time at the Regency. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you got into the apartment okay, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It did. Mm -hmm. The key still works. Oh, so where have you been all day today? Well, I was trying to track you guys down. I mean, why are you guys here, and why is the blue moon so dark? Darling, the blue moon is not only dark, it's damp. Yeah, you heard about a blackout, right? Yeah, um, but is it really all that bad? Well, we just had a lot of excitement. I mean, we, we were okay through it, but the pumps went out in the blue moon, so the kitchen took on water, the oh, statement, it's Dad, dead. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay, but you're gonna love the top of the towers. I mean, Billy needed a manager up here, so... Now I'm a partner. Yes, and he's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah, come on, you can come up here and uh, bedazzle or distract your dates. Uh, this wonderful yeah. view. Right. But you look great. Tell me something. Tell me, how was Europe? Uh, I just loved Paris. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. My host just stepped up. I'll be right back. I want to hear all of this, okay? Okay. Mm. So, so, Pat, I, I guess you ran into um, David last night at the apartment. Yes. Your brother David, I did. Well, everything was okay, right? Mm -hmm. Our meeting was a little weird. 
I walked in the apartment and I was tired and I wanted to get undressed and as soon as I took my clothes off, then David popped in. I mean, I don't know how long he was standing there watching me. Whoa, whoa, no, hell no, no, I don't think so. What? You want the truth, the facts. I will give them all to you and you can use them against me if you want, but get the whole story and try to see it for what it is. All right. Go ahead, Alexander, tell me. Tell me just how low you will go. I admit that I dislike Mindy. Huh, dislike? More than dislike. And I wanted to hurt her when I found out she'd been sleeping with my husband. You blamed her and not him. I blamed both of them. I was hurt and humiliated. Oh, I, I, I. Is it always Alexandra Spaulding? Is it always about you? No. Most of my world is about you. That's why I did what oh, I did. Oh, don't! Don't tell me that you did this for me. Because if you tell me that you hurt Melinda for my sake, I don't know what I'll do. You might try to see another point of view. Whose? Yours? Here. The family research that I was doing. You want it? No, I know the history. I wish you'd keep it. No, I have no use for it. You arrived here in Springfield trying to solve a mystery. You felt drawn to my other son, your brother. I wanted to know more about Lou Jack. And when I saw you, I knew you were my son. Mothers know these things. You, you see it in nature. Animals always sort out which are theirs. Animals, that's good. So I set out to get to know you. To do everything I could to correct the horrible wrong that had been committed against both of us. You were being taken from me. But you were drawn to the one person in Springfield who was dead set on keeping us apart. The one person who could keep you from assuming your rightful role in your family. Melinda didn't know who I was when we first fell in love. But when she did know, she tried to keep it from me. She came between us from the start. Why wouldn't she? I saw you in action with her, lady. You tried to hurt her and humiliate her every chance that you got. Of course she was going to try and keep me away from you. She was afraid of you. Was she afraid of me or was she afraid of the truth? Oh, that is the kind of game that... Well, that's what it comes down to. I was right about who you are. People thought I was insane. And I almost did lose my mind. But I was right. You're my son. And I was right about Mindy, too. No. All Roger did was find out about the DNA test results. Then he worked to delay your leaving Cambrai. He didn't change the results. Mindy did that. I was dishonest in what I did, that's true. But so was Mindy. The difference is I was trying to uncover the truth. Mindy plotted to hide the truth. Which was worse, Nick? Search your heart and tell me which was worse. gets less and less as time goes by. There are days when I just feel really lousy. When the world is just such a miserable place. And I think of her. If she saw me like that, she'd come to me and she'd say, why the long face? I'd tell her what was wrong. Tell her how the world was so unfair. She'd come up to me and she'd mess my hair. She'd say, Ah, oh, Nick, even a rose grows in dirt. And she would make me laugh. She was Irish, you know. She really had a gift. Mary McHenry. She will always be my mother. No matter what. No matter what, do you understand?
girl, Betty White. And Chato. On the next slide. You see, I'm right. Yeah. You are. I know you're going through a lot right now. So I'm going to make it easier for you. I'm leaving Springfield. For a while. Not forever. I want to give you some room. Time to... to think things through. I hope you'll come to realize that... that we can get past all this because you do have a life here. I'm not so sure about that. But you said... I said that I believe that you're my mother. But you want something more. We can put all this behind us. I know we can if you will just try. I don't know if I can anymore, Alexandra. You want to hear the ironic thing about all this? I was starting to have real feelings for you. More than I ever thought I could. But now... Oh, don't... Don't give up. Forgive me. Why not? When your father tried to run your life, what did you do? Did you accept his interference? Did you let him get away with it? That, that, that was different. How? How was it different? Think back, Alexandra. Your father told you that Eric was not right for you. He tried to break the two of you up, regardless of how you felt. You had no choice, right? You turned your back on your father. You turned your back on their heritage. Even when it turned out that he was right, that Eric was a scoundrel, you still didn't forgive Brandon for what he had done to you. You stayed away for a lot of years. You, you turned your back on this family. You broke all ties. That's exactly how I feel right now. You know something? I really learned a lesson from you. Your life is miserable, and it doesn't work. I just hope I find the strength to... I make the same mistake. What can I do? I'll do anything. Just leave me alone. Promise me you won't leave down while I'm away. No. No, no guarantees. I don't believe in them anymore. Even a rose grows in dirt. She was a wise woman. Your mother. I wish I could have met her. I don't know what you're thinking about, darling, but you're way off base. Billy, please just hear what I came to say. I've thought about this a lot. In fact, it's the only thing that I can think about. As far as I can see, there are three different kinds oh, of love. Oh, come on, Nadine. Please listen. There's, there's the love of the heart and the love of the mind and the love of the body. Uh, That's what brings people together. And with us, it's always been the physical, the love of the body that's brought us together. And I think... No, I know that if we would just make love now, you would remember everything that we still have, and you would see that what's holding us together is a whole lot stronger than what's tearing us apart. Nadine, I... Billy, you know what it's been like in the middle of the night, those times when we felt so close that we almost cried. You felt it. You know that. Yes, darling, I did feel it. And you can feel it again. Come on, Billy. Sorry, it's just too late. All right, I admit it. I, I made a mistake. I bungled it. I made a mess. But it had nothing to do with Billy. And I really resent your saying it did. Nothing to do with Billy? 
You allowed him to come all the way out to Cross Creek to be with you when you told Bill. Well, I didn't want that. It was my son's idea. But you let him. Well, so what? I mean, I, every time I tried to talk to Bill about this, I could tell there was really big trouble. So I thought that if Billy came out, it might help everything. That's all. Well, why could Bill possibly be having this trouble? Could it be he's been picking up on your mixed signals? Could it be that he sees the way your mood swings both ways about Billy? On the one hand, you swear up and down that you're through with him forever. And then on the other hand, as soon as there's a little bit of trouble, who do you call Billy? Wait a minute. That's not the way it was. I, I, I just felt that it would be better for Bill if, if he realized that I wasn't trying to replace his father and his life. Vanessa, I want to believe that. I've been fighting to believe that against all the evidence that's been piling up. But every time I turn around, here's Billy. Well, it's not going to be that way forever. No, it, it won't be that way at all, because this is it. Vanessa, you are a woman of honor. Now, you gave me your word. You swore to me that you would tell Bill about our relationship as soon as you two went away. Now, there are no excuses. You gave me your word. For a woman like you to break that word, it has to be more than just simple bad timing. Well, now, wait a minute. How do you know you weren't there? You're right. I wasn't there because I wasn't invited. But something in you delayed telling him, some doubt or some suspicion that you shouldn't tell Bill about you and me. Well, I wanted to tell him. Yeah, on some level. But somewhere, something kept you from giving him the final proof that it is over between you and Billy. Maybe because in your heart, you're not sure it is. Oh, that's the stupidest thing in the world. You, you, how could you say such a stupid thing like that to me? Wait a minute. Wait. Hey, Frank, just go if that's the way you feel. things in there. And besides, he didn't even know that I was in the apartment. The only reason why I brought it up is because it scared me. I had no idea that anyone else was staying there besides me, you, and Jilly. Cat, we should have been there to explain it to you. Daddy, it's Daddy, I love my new room. What? Yes, I love it. <laughs> Did I just say that? No, no, but I guess it was, it was harmless. I just, I could just kick myself for, for not writing you and letting you know that this guy's feet, you know? Well, I'm sure if I would have come home on schedule, then you would have told me, and I don't think you need to worry about it anymore. All right. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Jilly, I had no idea that you had a brother. Where did he come from? Well, he, he's my little brother, and he came for the wedding. He was at the wedding? I didn't see him at the wedding. Well, he was there. He was keeping a low profile. And... Anyhow, that's a long story. Um, after he came to town, he got into some trouble, so... Um... Hamp and I are helping him out. Oh, what kind of trouble? Well, Cat, he stole a credit card. Now, he's on probation, and one of the terms of probation is that he has to stay with Hamp and me. Excuse me, but a credit card, that is really silly. Yeah, I... yeah, well, look, I've got to run again, but um, we will explain the entire thing to you, okay? okay. Welcome back. Did it really happen the way you said it? No, I just cleaned the whole thing up. I'm pretty sure that he stood there and watched me get undressed because he sure did take his sweet little time before he popped up. Well, I am sorry for that. I will talk to David and it won't happen again. Jilly, I can handle it. No, you shouldn't have to. Well, look at... I, I owe you one. Cat? Well, thank you. Ah! Hi! Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, Jilly. Hi, Bridget. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're back. This place is so beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, I think so. Listen, I know you two have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> yeah, we do. I will catch up with my husband. You two take a table. How was Europe? How was Europe? How was Europe? Oh, the guys in Italy? Beautiful. Really? Yes. Uh, what about the English guys? I mean, they've got those accents. No, they were a little bit too pale for me. I mean, well, <laughs> I don't mean it like that, but I guess the sun just doesn't shine much there. How was your mom? Oh, she's okay. She's trying. It's just that she keeps bringing up the great universities, and she wants me to go to Northwestern. And I'm telling her, I'm going to Springfield U. Did she get any nerves? No, it was supposed to be mostly vacation, but we ended up in Vienna. And the whole point of that was so that she could get involved with some sports international television station. Oh, you're kidding. So what'd you do? I shopped. Oh. She gave me the credit card. Oh, honey. I'm it so was... sorry. <laughs> it was fun. 
I just wish you would have been there. Yeah, me too. But I bet you had a lot of nice people. Yeah, well, it was okay. It was just hard to meet people my own age. And besides, Mom's friends were so busy trying to impress each other mm. that I just had to come home early to get a little dose of reality, some real people, you know? Mm. We're definitely real people around here. So come on, I'm just rambling on. What's going on with you? Is there anything exciting happening in your life right now? What? Billy, it's not too late. Not if you don't let it be. Yes, yes. How can you be so sure? I just am, that's all. But just a few weeks ago, we were together. We were laughing, remember? Yes, darling, but that's not enough. I'm sure you must think you believe that. But I don't. Well, I'm sorry, darling, but you have to believe it. Billy, you are the love of my life. Look, darling, I'm sorry about that. But I know you still love me. You must. Just make love to me one more time. Just give me one more chance. And I promise that if you still feel the same way afterward, then I will accept it. Nadine, that wouldn't be fair to either one of us. No. We have got to make a clean break. Looking out my uh, window at the boathouse, I saw this mysterious figure, and I realized it was you. And I thought I could use a little fresh air myself. Yeah, you want fresh air? You better keep on moving it down the beach, because I'll only bring you down, man. Hmm. I don't think that anybody could bring me down any lower than I am, buddy. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I think I could use the company. You too, huh? Yeah, me too. Would you like some fine old brandy? What, no snifter? No, thanks. Really, I had a couple of drinks earlier, and it didn't seem to help. Hmm. I haven't tried it yet. <sighs> oh, man. <sighs> remember that uh, waterfront property with Thorpe and Alexander? Yeah, I sure do. Turns out that it was a paycheck to Thorpe for breaking up my relationship with Melinda. Are you sure? I'm afraid so. Damn. Hmm. Yeah. I'll second that. Alexandra and Roger. Yeah, Roger. Man, that guy is due for some payback from me, I'll tell you. And Alexandra. No. I guess I've already dealt with her. What's happened can't be changed, Fletch. That's the killer. The moment's lost. Certainly is. Oh, what a night! The stars must be in a particularly perverse alignment tonight. <laughs> At least as far as the men in Hunters Beach and the women in their lives are concerned. Well, don't tell me that something's gone wrong between you and Vanessa. Gone wrong? Maybe never right to begin with. Come on, Fletch. Something couldn't have gone wrong between you and Vanessa. I mean, you guys are crazy about each other. It can't be that important. You and Alexander are getting closer. Things change. Stuff happens. Well, what are you talking about? Well, I just happen to have been reminded vividly of the danger of wanting something or someone so much that you don't see the truth. I would have figured that I would have known that by now. I guess I'm just a slow learner. Well, what happened, Fletch? I mean, what went wrong? History. Come on, look, why don't you tell me, all right? Maybe I could help you out. I seem to be very good at helping other people out with their problems. Well, thank you for the thought, McPartner. But we've already talked about it. And talked about it, and 
talk about it. And finally, you just have to look at the actions. <laughs> you see? You were wrong. What are you talking about? Well, I did manage it to bring you down lower. Listen, do me a favor, right? Wait here, okay? <laughs> Don't go anyplace. Don't worry about it. I'm not about to inflict myself on anybody else. All right. Maybe you might be Fletcher. Are you expecting him? No. Made a massive fight. Really? Yes, he was making these accusations. Well, you know the way he is. Yes, I do. He's just as crazy as ever, going on and on, jumping to conclusions. What did he do? Oh, well, he... I made a small mistake. I'd promised him that I would tell my son about our relationship, and I didn't. Your, your time at Cross Creek? Yes, and he was just... Oh, I mean, he's nuts. He's making this small mistake into a huge one. He's saying that he's going to walk away from everything we have, and he makes me so damn mad. Yes, I can see that. I just feel as though I should tell him, fine, go ahead. Do whatever you want. Good riddance, right? Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, I know. I can't. So, I guess I should just tell him that it's not such a big deal and we'll work it out, right? I mean, you know him. I wish I could help you, Vanessa. I certainly wish you and Fletcher well, but as you know, I didn't do very well with Fletcher myself, so I'm not the person to ask. I'm afraid you're on your own in more ways than one. What do you mean? That's why I came over. In here are all the files, safe keys, codes, and so on that you will need to run Spalding. But what are you... And uh, this is a letter I would like hand-delivered to Dr. Eve Guthrie. Alexander, what's all this about? I'm going away for a while. Tonight? If I can. Does the board know? They'll be informed. You're in charge during my absence. How long will you be gone? Until I can find some answers. It's because of Nick. He... Excuse me. Yes, who is it? I'm Oh, no, no, finish. I, I, I'll go out the back and please don't mention that I was here. Nick, just a moment, please. Alexandra, I can't let you... Everything do... you need is right there. But I can't let do you... Do a good job, baby. Vanessa, listen, I'm sorry to bother you so late. Oh, that's all right. W what is it? Well, I just saw Fletcher. You did? Where is he? Uh, he's down on the dunes by the boathouse, and I just thought you might want to know. Yeah, I do. Thanks. I'm going to go find him. Look, do you need a ride? Or oh, no, no, that's okay. I, I have my own car. Okay.
did happen this summer. God, I've been just dying to talk to you about this. It's really good. Oh, Nadine, Kat's here. Hi. Oh, hi, honey. Nice to have you back. I've got to talk to you right away. Excuse me. Nadine, what is going on? Just one question. Have you told Kat about your condition yet? No, no, not yet. I was just getting worried. Good. Because, Bridget, honey, your problem is my solution. This has been Guiding Light. Hosiery by Donna Karen. This is CBS.